All right, welcome to the stream, everyone. Commander Red Falcon here, sitting in Jameson Memorial, and uh, this will be the beginning of our epic journey to Beagle Point and beyond. So let me just go ahead and punch in my coordinates real quick, get some music going, and we'll start this journey shortly. All right, so sort of a tradition I want to start doing is do a quick little tour of the soul system before we head out. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And that'll give us one more opportunity to make sure we've got all of our stuff together. See you, James Memorial. We uh, won't be seeing you for a while. Ah, damn it, I'm mass locked again. Huh. There we go. Okay, now we say goodbye. Forgot about that mass lock. I don't think I've shown anyone on the stream the soul system, so this will be a treat. Years ago, I did a video where I stopped in, uh, I started in Wolf 359 and then uh, went to the Soul System. Let me check the stream real quick. Cool. It has been literally years since I've been to the soul system so this will be interesting to see if my data is still there hey there's our son Take a quick look at system map. Now I wonder if they're gonna count all the dwarf planets. Wow. Okay, it's a little wild. Yeah, it looks like I've still got all the all the data. You'll notice Mars looks a little different. It's been terraformed. Wow. Yeah, I think they've got all the, the dwarf planets in here as well. Good grief. Yep, 
There's Triton. Pluto. <laughs> and then all the other <laughs> planets. <laughs> Dwarf planets. I guess enough people complained that Pluto wasn't a planet, so they're like, fine. You want planets? We'll give you planets. Here we go. Eris. Whew. Well, I don't think we have enough time to really go to all those. But, let's start with Mercury. Actually, you guys have seen Mercury. Where's Earth? There's Earth. Still a little flyby of Earth, shall we? Hopefully I can get the uh, east coast of the U.S. on the light side. Get a nice little photo op there. Wow, that is so cool that I can look down and <laughs> see space coming at me. This is so cool. I, I love this cockpit. If you watched my previous stream, you got to see exactly how much I love this cockpit. Uh, all right. And for you watching at home, it, it's just not the same. You, you don't get the, the second, the, the true, like, the depth perception. Okay, there's Luna, our moon. We're going to have to slow down a bit. Notable signals, human, four. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Congressional streamlining. Hmm. Wonder if that's a yeah. These are points of interest. Well, not um, tourist beacons. All right, Earth. It looks like Australia, maybe. Here we go. like Australia I think yeah that's Australia <laughs> Philippines looks like Russia so if we keep going this way yeah, there's Japan. We'll keep going this way. So the Odyssey update is supposed to... Um... Oh. oh, look, there's... There's, um... Alaska. There's the Pacific Coast. Yeah, it's on the dark side. Oh well, that'd be a cool shot actually. We kind of get to see where the population centers are. Wow. The Midwest really filled out. Look at all that. Of course, this is like the year... Like, 3,000-something, so I'm not surprised. Let's jump into normal space. All right, let's get a little photo op here. Let me 
go. Perfect. Let's just line that over a little bit. There we go. Should be good enough. And let's get another one. Of course, I wish it was on the... Ooh, that's a pretty good shot. See if we can get one more. Okay, and let's switch to the free camera. We had enough of that. But what I really want to see is Mars. we clear the earth here so I've been thinking and this probably comes from my background of tabletop RPGs um, about like my character my avatar like where he's from what he's done and so I decided that um, he's a Martian which would explain why he already has a license to the soul system. And he chose the commander name Red Falcon because of a type of bird that was uh, moved over to Mars from Earth that evolved into a particular Martian style of raptor. Hence the name. And, uh... The Founders World thing, well, that's just because he had family that um, he was a dependent of someone that had a license there, and um, the Pilots Federation allows for those certain uh, exceptions. So, anyway. Oh, you also notice I've got a little Martian bobble, and it bobbles when the ship moves. <laughs> little something to remind everyone where we're from I wanted to buy like one of those little plants because they sell like these little aloe plants but it was just it was too much money um, and of course now they've got a discount so I should have just saved my money and just bought one at a discount but oh well I like the Martian bobble the little Mars bobblehead it's fun
And there's one last thing after we deal with Mars, and that's to, uh... I want to fly as close as I can at Super Cruise around the rings of Saturn. That just seems like something fun to do. But uh, on my YouTube channel, I posted a tour of the Soul System from back when the game first came out, and I believe Pluto was the furthest planet. And as NASA discovers more dwarf planets, they add them. So now it's it's kind of silly how many planets we have now. I don't even know what they teach the kids in school these days. Like, I remember when I started college, that's when Pluto was um, no longer considered a planet. And I remember, oh, this this shows my age. I remember um, I had joined Facebook because I was a freshman in college, and Facebook was only for college students. And one of the first groups I joined was when I was your age, Pluto was a planet. Which just, wow. That's some wild stuff. But yeah, I'd be interested what they're teaching the kids in school now. Alright, so this is Mars. It's beautiful what they did to it. And it still maintains its, like, red color. Look at that. Oh, yeah. If only the, uh... The Martian Marines could see this from the expanse. Wow, look at that. Is that a, is a little tornado? It's beautiful. Wow, look at that. Of course, any proud Martian should be proud of his home world. All right, let's see here. We're going to go to Mars High, which sounds like a... Disney Channel original program. Actually, let me get a quick. Let me get a quick shot here. Go to Mars High. So the last time I was in the Soul System, I was getting constantly harassed by uh, FSD interdictors. I'm not sure if they were NPC pirates or what, but that might have been. Oh crap! That might have had something to do with the um, might have had something to do with the fact that the uh, game was. Um, they were going to reset, and so they just had the NPCs go crazy. I don't know. All right. Requesting docking. This will be our... Kind of our first stop...
Oh boy. Ooh. Crap. Oh. Okay. That didn't help. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Den at the paint. Alright. Docking pad 2-2. Two, two. Where is... There it is. Whoa! Okay. All right. Okay. Wow. All right. I'm flying this thing like a cobra. Okay. Whew. Ship integrity. Okay, we got our scarabs. We got our AFM units at full. AFM units full. Okay, we got fuel. Double check our outfitter real quick. I love how clean and industrial everything looks on the on uh, this Martian station. see here no hard points good no utility points don't need them core internals got our lightweight 3a you'll see that we're a little underpowered on the power plant which is good we don't have any weapons so we don't need it 4d thrusters uh best frame shift drive we have it's been modified 4d life support um, power distributor we downgraded on that Sensors, just the lightweight version, 32 ton capacity fuel tank. All right. Planetary approach suite, detailed surface scanner, which I've actually upgraded. It has uh, like a almost 30% probe radius, so that should help with scanning planets. We've got two vehicle hangers with SRVs. Got my two auto field maintenance units. Got the lightest, smallest shield I could fit on this thing. My Guardian FSD booster, which gives me like an additional, what is it, 10.5 light years. And of course, the big one, the 6A fuel scoop. So, everything looks good. Um. Rebuy on this thing is 1.7 million. I've got 69 million, so I am good to go. All right. I'm going to plug in my next coordinates. I'll be right back. Okay, so the first leg of our journey is going to be the Mammon system. It's just under a, th a thousand light years away. Um, in the chat, somebody said that the uh, reaction of the uh, docking bay operator would be hilarious. I agree. It it uh, <laughs> and I'm uh, it's like going from a sedan to like an SUV or a truck. Like it just doesn't turn on a dime or stop on a dime. 
Okay, so 17 jumps to Mammon. But first things first, let's go. Where's Saturn? Yeah. All right. There's Mars, red planet. Let's get as close as we can to the rings of Saturn, and uh, we'll start the journey properly. Hmm. So, I guess... Scientists decided to, like, name your rectum back to Uranus. Because, yeah, there it is. Huh. Or maybe the professor is just lying to me. Or this is just in an alternate universe to Futurama. Who knows? All right. I need to get a straw for my soda. Well, I say soda, it's carbonated water. Hmm. Still haven't found a good spot for this cable to rest. Be happy when uh, VR gets to the point where we can do like full. We can get the same quality VR and wired that we can in wireless. Because right now, um, there's a lot of um, um, a lot of trade-offs. Hmm. So. Uh, no lie, the first thing I did when I played this game in VR is I jumped to the closest asteroid belt or uh, rings and I just started like flying around the asteroids. It was fun. Don't think this uh don't think this ship can do that as gracefully as I did in my um uh I think I was in my Diamondback actually when I did that. Oh, crap. Wasn't paying attention to my throttle. That's fine. We'll loop a shame it. See how close we can get to the rings. Hmm. 
My goal is to get as close as I can without being forced at a super cruise. So, if you're familiar with uh, the TV show and books, The Expanse, there are um, there are kids that um, daredevils that do what's called um, slingshotting. So that's where they'll use the gravity of a mass to slingshot them around. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> They'll slingshot a uh, slingshot themselves around. Oop, I don't want to get too close. Ah, uh, now we're on the dark side. Doesn't look as cool. Uh. Um, but in the process of slingshotting themselves, they um they expose their bodies to massive, massive amounts of g-forces. So. Um, a lot of times, uh, they end up dying in the process. This is similar, I guess. All right. Enough of that. Let's get out of here. What is that? Is that like another set of rings? Ooh. Am I just going to fly between them? That'd be really cool. Yep. <laughs> Bye, Saturn. Bye, Mars. Oh, we are not going to see you for a while. Okay, so I guess we should start with um, a rundown of what we're doing, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. So, our ultimate goal is to hit Beagle Point. Beagle Point is just over 65,000 light years away from Earth. It's one of the furthest points you can get in the game, in the galaxy. Um, and there's a point just beyond that that you need an engineered ship to get to, which I have. Um, this ship can make that jump, assuming I have the materials to do the... Um, the FSD booster. So, we're going there. I broke the journey into six legs. Uh, the first three legs are getting there, and then the last three legs are the return trip. So the first leg of our journey is going to be Seoul to Colonia, which is just over, I think it's actually exactly like 22,000 light years or something. Well, rounded. Second journey, second leg is going to be Colonia to Sagittarius A, which uh, Sagittarius A is the center of the galaxy. It's the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy. And then from there, we're going to go to Beagle Point, which is probably going to be the longest part of the leg. Well, it's probably going to be one of the longer legs. Um, so, that's the overview of that. On our way, so the first leg of our journey to Colonia, we're going to be um, taking what's called the Colonia Connection Highway. So, what that is, is it's a series of asteroid bases and some, um, like, prison colonies and various, like, small stations that are between Seoul and Colonia, and they're designed to act as, um, basically truck stops, <laughs> for lack of a better term, um, and we're going to be visiting all those as we go along. 
I've plotted the route through the, uh, there's a neutron highway calculator, so we're going to be hitting neutron stars on the way. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, <laughs> um, this is going to be the furthest I've been from the soul system. I think the furthest I've ever been was the Bubble Nebula, which is like 7,000 light years away. So that's going to be pretty, pretty crazy. So, as a general rule of thumb, I don't really bother doing any in-depth scans in a thousand light year radius around Sol System. It's just not worth it. Um, I mean, yeah, there's money to be made, I guess, but you're going to make more money outside the bubble because you get a 50% um, in 50% payout for discover for being the first to discover a star system. So for this, I'm not even going to worry about it too much. And in the interest of time, I'm going to be very selective about what systems I uh, investigate. Because if it's a planet full of ice bodies, it. Yeah, it's... I'll make money, but the time invested in scanning all those just isn't worth it when I could be jumping to another system that could potentially have um, a terraformable world. So, Plus, um, the faster I can get there, uh, the more opportunities I can have to find, you know, really cool stuff. So, that's why... Um, I'm going to kind of hoofing it. All right, let me check the chat real quick. Huh. I have two people watching. Yeah. Oh, and I love this 6A fuel scoop. Oh, it's so nice. So I can just pop into a system, honk, fuel, next one. Boom, 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 boom. It's great. I'm starting to love this ship already. <laughs> um, so what's really cool about... Oh, I need to have EDSM up, don't I? Hmm. Okay, well, that's fine. So what's really cool about EDSM um, and the add-on ED Discovery, which is an application you run on your desktop that's running the game, um, it will actually keep track of how many light years you've traveled in each ship. So I looked at the Kestrel, and the Kestrel's at like 24,000 light years. So I know 14 of that is the trip to the Bubble Nebula. Well, a little over 14. Probably closer to 16, because I didn't quite do a straight path. Drive so that was pretty cool to watch. Um, this ship, prior to me starting, was about 400 light years, because I did a few... Um, I, I did a shakedown cruise, basically, to make sure, you know, everything's good. You know? Make sure I can still boost. Make sure my power settings are set correctly and all that stuff. At this rate, we could probably do a couple legs. So I don't know much about Mammon. I just know Mammon's first on the um, the highway, the connection highway. 
I also went through and bookmarked a bunch of points of interest. And we're, pro we're not going to be close to any of them until we get to Colonia. But from Colonia, there's a few... There's a couple, like, three points of interest that are on the way to Sagittarius A. So we're going to be hitting those. Um... So I, due to the just the sheer size of this journey, I'm not going to be able to stream the whole thing because I typically only stream about two hours a, a week, and um, I don't always have a schedule that's conducive to long-term streaming. So what I'm going to be doing is using these streams as more like an update, to kind of update you on the progress, the mission, where I am, whether I found anything neat, that sort of stuff. Um, I also want to use this opportunity to, um, while I'm flying through the galaxy, to uh, get some reading done. I, um, Frank Herbert's Dune is getting a new movie release at the end of the year, hopefully. <laughs> um, we're not sure how things are going to go with theaters and everything. Um, but regardless, there's supposed to be a movie, a new movie based on Dune coming out. And I have never actually read the book. <laughs> I've seen the um, 1980s movie. Um, David Lynch was the director? Anyway, um, enjoyed it. So I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy this one. But I've never read the book. So what I'm going to do is while I'm flying through space, what more appropriate thing to listen to than an audiobook of Dune? <laughs> So, um, we'll start an audi Audible account, not sponsored, and, uh, you know, just kind of listen to that while I'm flying through space. Um, I wish you could do it on the stream, but unfortunately, uh, royalties and all that. Um, so, that's a problem. But when I'm offline, um, traveling, I can listen to that. Um, the books about 25 hours long so that's a I'll probably be done with it before we hit Beagle Point I hope <laughs> um, oh so I did a um, now this is an estimate of how long this journey is going to be um, it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 130 light years now, that's a conservative estimate. It's probably going to be a little longer than that, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be out here in the black a very long time. <laughs> Thankfully, I, uh, I got the ship outfitted. So, we're... This is probably the um, best build... Well, not the best build, but um, for my needs. Let's put it that way. This is probably the best build for my needs on this journey. I could have spent another week or so grinding out. Um, hold on. Fighting with my cable here. There we go. Um, one day I'll find a good spot for that cable. It's just not today. Um... So, there we go. I think that works. Um, what was I saying before I got in a fight with the VR cable? Oh, yeah. I think. But just like any game, there are um, there are min maxers, and I could have spent another week grinding out engineering materials and rep and all that. But to be honest, it would only have given me maybe another light year or two off my jump range. 
and it's just it's just not worth it. Like it's just not worth spending that much time just to get a, a marginal increase in my jump range. So if anyone's interested in the ship build that I'm using, um, just let me know and um, I'll put a link to it. Um, the biggest thing for this build is getting uh, grade 5 FSD uh, range. And any of the two engineers you kind of start with can do that. And then um, the second part was the probe radius of the um, um, detailed surface scanner. That's the second part. And then there's the um, Guardian FSD booster. Which, um, they're just... I, I almost did a stream of that, but... Uh, I just... I don't know. I just didn't do it. But, um... That one's a little involved. You have to go to a place that's like a thousand light years away from the soul system. And, um... Scan some stuff. Do like a... Uh, get to go to a Guardian site. And, you know, do some stuff there. And then you gotta like, get some parts. So, it's fun. Drive charging. I actually had my first encounter with a another player there. Um, it was, because, um, you know, th this game's got a, um, a reputation of being like uh, Gankville or something. Everyone's afraid to play in open because they're afraid that players are going to gank them. Which, you know, I played Vanilla Wow... Vanilla WoW on a PvP server, and yeah, STV, for those who played early WoW, yeah, Stranglethorn Vale, it was just gank city, you just go there and, you know, you just constantly get harassed by Alliance Rogues. Yeah, I'm a Horde player, deal with it. Um, but yeah, it was just, you know, it was annoying, but it was manageable. And that's kind of how I see it with this. But, you know, I haven't had any negative interactions with any players. Um, they certainly... Uh, when you encounter another player... Oh! Ship's getting too hot. We cooled down a little bit. Um, oh, wow. That's a cool nebula around Mammon. Um... Now, granted, I've been playing the majority of my time's been out in the black, where no one's around, so. Um, but yeah, I, I've encountered a couple players. Um, we even encountered one on the stream on the last episode, and, you know, like, they're just folks just trying to do stuff. Um, you know, as long as you give them a salute, they're They'll salute you back, and so, you know, they're just, they're friendly. All right. So this is our first little pit stop. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and scan this place, huh? It's supposed to, oh, I didn't honk the system. Gotta honk the system first. Alright, Mammon. Let's see what's so great about you. Rocky bodies. Asteroid clusters. This is a... I believe this is a prison colony out here. Hey, there's my buddy validating. I know, it's probably a placeholder, but that's still funny. I think it's funny anyway. Alright. Yeah. 
I bet they probably chose this because it's got so many um, asteroids. Prison labor, right? And if I recall correctly, uh, let's see. I believe it's an asteroid base, and it's in the rings of uh, that high metal content world that we saw earlier. Ooh, that is a really thin line. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's see. I guess I just could have sca scanned the nav beacon. <laughs> oh well. More fun to use the scanner, I guess. Resource extraction site. Yeah, mammoth monitoring system. Let's go there and sell some data. Get some positive rep. And uh, when we're docked there, we'll go ahead and... Um, plug in our next coordinate. Am I going to? No, I'm not going too fast. Come on, come on, come on. That's the one thing about this game, it's a lot of waiting. <laughs> So it's funny, um, it seems like there are two players in Elite Dangerous. Ones who use docking computers and ones who don't. Um, I don't care. And it's kind of funny too, because there are people who will get like upset with you if you use a docking computer. I don't use one just because I like to, because it takes up a, a low level spot on your ship and I want to fit something else on there. Um, so for me, it's more just, I want to use that spot for something else um, but yeah it's funny like people get like upset with you I don't care <laughs> I guess I'm just getting older and I just don't care like whatever man you use a docking computer if you want but you know impl oh shit oh fuck 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 I think that was an NPC I th well, I should say, that I think this is an NPC trying to interdict me. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You can do it. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's like, I don't have anything. Why do you want to interdict me? There we go. Whew. I'm in... I think that was an NPC. It's okay. We'll sell some data to them. The um, at least the um, law enforcement NPCs will like us, so that's a start, right? That might have been a pirate. Pirates will just randomly spawn and um, they'll try to, you know, screw with you. Okay, hopefully we're on the light side. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna be on the light side. Actually, hold on. I need to, well, actually, let, let's get safely tucked away inside a a space dock. <laughs> Those rings look beautiful, look at that. Oh, that's a cool looking planet. Whoa. This is wild. Wow, look at that. It's like we're traveling on top of um, 
clouds or something. All right, there we go. Let's check our contacts. Oh, just the Type 7 transport. Nothing. All right, so we can't actually get clearance to land until we're... I think it's like 7.5 kilometers. Okay. Docking Bay 20. Cool. What the hell's going on there? It's like an eagle. Huh. Wonder oh, that looks like a dogfight or something. Cool. As long as they keep it over there. Not interested in that right now. All right. Uh, let's see. 20. Where the hell's 20? Uh, guys, where's my... Where's my landing pad? Well, there it is. Okay, yeah, they give me the landing pad that's right by the mail slot. Thanks, guys. All right. There we go. If you take too long to land, um, it's considered loitering and they will shoot you. There we go. They, um, with the update, they added these, um, like quick access slots here. Alright. Here we go. Um, the paint, I'm just gonna let it wear down over time. Because why not? Alright, let's sell these guys a little data. I already have like maybe a million credits worth of data that I've just been collecting. Yeah, 1.3 million. Always good to make friends when you can. All right. And I'll save that for later. That's probably them saying my reputation's been brought to cordial. Cool. All right. Okay, now that we're safely tucked away, let's take a look at the star system, see if there's anything interesting here. All right, let's see here. The hell? How does, how does this work? I, I, I guess they're just like, these planets are just caught in the um, gravitational pole of these two stars. Not mapped. Okay, yeah, nothing. Nothing cool. All right. All right. I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab my next waypoint.
Okay. Next coordinate. I believe this is a neutron star. Nope. So, just saw in the chat um, speculation of how much a spice planet would be worth to scan. Um, uh, well, considering, um, no, I'm only familiar with the first book. Um, I'm pretty sure you can only get it spice from one planet, so I'm not sure. I don't think there's enough money to cover that. Maybe a trillion credits? I, I don't know. Alright. Landing gear up. Alright. Always good to have friends. Always make friends when you travel. Especially in space. Also, another thing I like about the ship is the uh, reverse thrusters are right here on either side. So you can see them uh, fire when the ship slows down. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Alright, come on. Good. We're out of the mass lock. 21 jumps. Not to be confused with 21 Jump Street. Okay, so at this point, I'll start checking out systems and see if they're worth doing a detailed scan of. Oh. I need to check my computer and make sure I've got the routes set correctly. Rocky ice worlds, ice bodies. Uh, high metal content might be interesting. Let's see if there's anything out here. Focus on getting these high metal content. All right, I think that's all of them. Let's see if any of these are worth scanning. System map. See what we got. Yeah, Beagle Point's gonna be wild. 
Because you can actually see, like, almost the entire Milky Way. Because you're so far out. love how fast that fuel scooping is. My metal content. Ooh, an ammonia world. Okay, this is a good place to scan. Yeah, the ammonia world alone is worth it. Can I still get it? Ha! Barely. Ooh, that might be a good candidate for terraforming. But you can tell, like, these... These planets have been thoroughly explored. Still money, though. All right, let's see. Ooh, these look promising. Oh, that one's a terraformable world. That one's a candidate for terraforming. Not that one. That one. And then the ammonia world. Really? Why aren't these? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, these two. Yeah. Okay, this one's terraformable. So we got like... One. Two. Skip three. Go to four. Okay. Okay. Wait, am I missing something? There we go. Cool. So one, two, and four. Because ammonia worlds are just good to pick up regardless. Well, good. We're going to make some real good friends on the next stop. Give them all this good data. I think one thing I like about this particular element of the game is it's almost like taking a road trip. Like a long one. Fun. Road trip across the stars. Except we measure our distance in light years and not miles. Oh, we get to try out this new and improved, upgraded, super awesome probe scanner. So this will be fun. All right. So this is the par six. I'm just curious, how much of a planet are we going to get? Let's see. Let's do this. Let's hit you right there. And there. And there. All right. 
So this is almost a 30% increase in the scan radius. Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> okay, and I just need to shoot one right there. Huh, look at that. It almost covered the entire radius of the... Um, well, the, the, almost the, the whole area of the other side of the planet. Wow. Oh, yes. I did a par 6 and 4. Oh, okay, that. Forgot how controls work for a second. Okay, so we're skipping three, we're going to two. Skip three, go to four. Cool. Well, damn, this is gonna make uh, scanning planets a lot faster. So we know on a par six, just hit one on the back, one on the top, one on the bottom, and one in the front, and that should do it. Maybe. Check the chat real quick. <laughs> All right. I'm looking around the ship. But yeah, the community is all a buzz now about the, the Odyssey update. It's supposed to come out um, early next year, I think. Yeah. Um, or is what fans are calling it Space Legs. So we'll see how that is. Being able to actually get out of the cockpit of your ship in your SRV and walk around. Um, they've promised social hubs. They've promised uh, FPS combat. So it, it's it's so exciting because it's going to bring a whole new dimension to this game. And it's basic. It's now granted. I'm not. I don't have like I have reasonable expectations for this. But I just hope they let us walk around in our ships. Like, that's all I really want. Like, I want to know what... Well, oh, actually, here we go. Boom. See how that goes. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah, that's badass. Look at that. Oh, not quite. Just four short. Not a problem. I'll just shoot one right here. And I'll take care of it. I just need 4%. I'll be good. Hardest part is waiting for the probe to hit the target. Though I guess I could probably get around that by stopping further away. And then we want to go to the fourth planet. But yeah, I want to be able to get out of the seat and go see what's behind that door there. And I don't know, just I mean, I'll admit, like for all of Star Citizens jankiness. One thing I did like about it was the fact that I could set my ship to travel across a star system and I could just get out, walk around, 
look out the window, you know, practice shooting in the back, in the cargo hold, you know. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think Space Sim fans are, they're starting to get the game they've always wanted. Well, at least something close to it. <laughs> um, so, I'm looking forward to it. Of course, um, I won't be pre-ordering it unless there's some kind of in-game incentive to do that. Um, I know when you pre-ordered Horizon, which is the SRV driving expansion, apparently if you pre-ordered it, you got like a Cobra Mark IV, which is a um, heavier and bulkier version of the Cobra Mark III. It's technically not better. Well, better subjective. Well, it's weird, you know, like, if you're a developer, like, you want... And it, it's an exclusive ship, ship, so you've had to have pre-ordered it. You know, it's like, do you... You don't want to make something like that pay-gated and be overpowered, but at the same time, it's like you want to give some... Um, you want to give the players something nice, so I don't know. It, it's a... It's a balancing act. And really, it only really affects people who are um, ship collectors, to be honest. Okay, let's try getting in like 30 light years. Okay, par 7, so you're going to be a little bit bigger. Boom. Boom. And about right there. Still got that efficiency bonus. Damn it. Wrong button. All right. That's all that's in this system. Let's head off to the next. Actually, let me consult the cheat sheet real quick. Just consulted the cheat sheet. Oh, crap. Um, looks like that system was about 2 million credits. Not bad. All right. Okay, what am I looking for here? What do we got? Rocky Ice Worlds, Ice Bodies, Rocky Bodies. None of those are terraformable. Next system, please. Can you go with your cousin? I hate this song. Because it's so catchy. So yeah, in response to that chat message, um, yeah, um, this game is going to, looks like it's gonna put <laughs> Star Citizen to shame. Um, it, it just, you know, it's a better business model. And don't get me wrong, like, this game has its own problems. Like, I can share plenty of YouTube videos for people who've played this game a hell of a lot longer than me. And, like, engineering is broken. 
Um, there's, you know, a lot of veteran players complain that there's really no in-game. You know, there's lack of content, but, you know... Oh, never mind. There's nothing here. Um, but I'm 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 optimistic. I'm cautiously optimistic about this update. I just there's um taking this back to cars, which kind of everything going kind of goes back to cars with me. Um, Toyota as a company, they're the kind of company that does incremental changes over time and they'll perfect the product um camry has gone through so many like little iterations and changes um perfecting things and you know it's slow and steady but that's ultimately how you make a good product and i think fdev for all their faults um know that and so that's why they're kind of cautiously and slowly implementing changes. Um, of course, um, of course, there's a um, another space game I played. A little MMO called Eve Online. Not sure if any of you've heard of that one. Huh, I'm joking. Um, they had a similar thing, uh, walking in stations, and ultimately it, um, I don't know, it didn't really go anywhere, like, you got to the point where you could, like, make a really detailed avatar, but then, like, the actual, like, walking in stations portion just didn't really do much. Now, granted, Eve is a completely different game. Now, they didn't turn it into, like, a first-person shooter or anything. Um, but... Still, like, their whole walking in stations thing was kind of underwhelming. And, and I hope we don't get the same thing. But, who knows? CCP still owns the uh, World of Darkness license. I'm still waiting for them to make, like, a Vampire the Masquerade game. Well, actually, no, there's supposed to be a new Vampire the Masquerade game coming out. Which, for all of you watching, if you've not played Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, it's janky, it's old, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. Um, it was one of those very ambitious games that, um, unfortunately, had to be cut. So there's a lot of content in the game that's uh, not there. It's missing. Um, but there are little hooks for different things. Um, there's a fan mod that fixes a lot of stuff. So thankfully there's still a, uh, there's a good community behind that game. But, you know. But I was really excited when CCP acquired that license. All right, let's see. What's on the radar? Uh, rocky ice bodies, rocky ice worlds, gas giants. Nope, nothing interesting here. Frameshift drive charging. 14 jumps to go. Let me check my triptych, I guess you could call it. Be right back. Okay. So, um, not a neutron star. That's actually another system that's on the uh, connection highway between Colonia and Sol. 
So there's going to be a um, probably another asteroid station there that we can dock at. Oh crap, I actually have three people watching now. <laughs> Hi people. I think that's the most I've ever had watching this thing at once. Well, for the new people, let me catch up on what's going on. Um, we're going to Beagle Point. Uh, but first, we're going to go to Colonia. So we just left the soul system. We're uh, probably about, let me see. What we got here? Rocky bodies, rocky ice worlds. Nah, nothing good here. Okay. Um, let's see, we're over a thousand light years from soul. So we're not far into this journey at all. It's gonna be a while. <laughs> But that's kind of the whole, the whole point of this stream is going to be um, going there. Oh, that reminds me, I need to update my Twitch stuff. Oh well, I'll do that later. <laughs> All right. See what's Rocky Ice Worlds, Rocky. Yep, nothing here. Okay. Being very selective about the systems I take this time to scan thoroughly. Uh pretty much if it's Earth like ammonia. Or one of those planets that can be terraformable, I'm not interested. Actually, hold on, let me check my cheat sheet again. Alright, so rocky planets can be terraformable, I need to remember that. But yeah, you guys have any questions or anything, put it in the chat. Questions about the game? I don't know. Recommendations? <laughs> in the system. Rocky Ice Worlds. Oh, we got some Rocky Bodies here. 
No, it's an icy body. I want rocky bodies. Rocky bodies in here. You know, I'm just gonna scan this system. It seems like a lot of them are clustered together. Should be make things easier. Okay, good. It's not behind the star. That's annoying. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think there are any rocky bo regular rocky bodies in this system. Okay, well, damn. That was... Yeah, because I don't think there are any rocky... Regular rocky bodies in here. Yeah. Yeah, they're all icy. Yeah, yeah rocky ice world. Yeah. I shouldn't have wasted my time on this. Oh, well, money's money. It's a little more money than just honking it. Okay, so a question came in from the chat on um, kind of like what my, I assume what my, my goals are, um, right this, with the ship. Um, so what I'm basically doing is, um, this ship, I'm going to keep it, regardless, it's going to go in storage, and um, I know I'm going to make Elite in exploration probably by the time I get to Colonia so um, my next step is to start working on trading so I want to buy a trading ship um, probably a type 9 I haven't decided yet and then I'm gonna start working on the trading aspect of the game and get my trading rank up to elite so but this ship um, I have a feeling I'm gonna have a lot of sentimental value so I'm just not never gonna get rid of this ship I'm just gonna put it in Jameson Memorial keep it there um, same with all my other ships I'm just I like to keep them and they're good to have um, and then once I do the trading aspect and get to trading elite rank and trading then I'm gonna focus on combat and then I'm going to have a completely different ship for that. <laughs> so, um, and it's interesting. Like, there are different ways you can play this game, right? So you can do, like, one ship, the, kind of the one ship method where you keep one ship at any time. And then, you know, you just sell the ships you don't want or sh sell the ship, get another ship, um, b basically trade them out. But I have enough money. And I don't get charged, um, from what I could tell, um, you're not charged like a storage fee for keeping ships at your station, so I'm just gonna keep this ship. Engage. 
That's what's really cool about this game is, you know, you buy a ship, and it's it's kind of like a car in a way. Um, different ships are better at different things. They all have their specialties. Some are more general purpose, but you um. You know, you spend a lot of time in that ship, so you kind of form a bond with it in a way. So, you know, it's like any great ship, like Milan Falcon, the Rastanante, the Enterprise. Ooh. Okay, we're going to stop here and scan these. We've got some metal, um, metal content planets here. But there are a lot of um, excellent... Because I tried to do trading um, a few years ago, and I didn't know about all these third-party tools um, that the fan community have made. Oh, wow, look at that gas giant. Um, that can assist with um, making um, like trade routes. Because, yeah, there are tools built into the game that can kind of help, but to be able to, and I don't know, some people might consider it cheating, I suppose, but I don't know. I don't think it is, because all it is, all it's doing is just taking readily available data and processing it in a way that people can use it effectively, and it's relying on players, you know, being able to upload their logs. So, you know, I don't know. I don't think it is. You're not exploit, and, and the devs don't consider it exploiting either. It's just you're... It's like um, saying a day trader is cheating by, you know, using programs that can look at market data. No, it's just his job, so. Or her job. Whoever's job. Stockbroker's job. So. I'm just using the tools available to me. Alright. Okay, so I think we can safely exclude those two. But some of these might be possible. Let's see here. Nope. 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 Ooh. You're a candidate for terraforming. Ah. Good. I'm glad I stopped here. And I think high metal content worlds, terraformable, you're like in the 300k range, I think. So yeah, good money. Something I like about this game is it's it's kind of a sandbox, you know, it's an open sandbox. You can kind of you can approach it any way you want. Um I'm doing it I'm going to do, so, I'm, be, I'm doing what they call climbing the ranks. I'm trying to get, my goal ultimately is to get triple elite status. And that's where you're elite in exploration, trading, and combat. And I'm going it in the order of exploration, trading, and then um, combat. And here's my reasoning for all that. You can make a lot of money trading... Um, with little risk to yourself early on in the game. Um, I might have mentioned this on a previous stream. There's a thing called the uh, Roads to Riches um, track for exploration. Oh, crap. Okay, that was a little too fast. There we go. That's better. 
approached that planet a little too fast. All right, let me go ahead and just... Hey, I might get a first map credit, sweet. I wanna say that's, cause I know if you first discover something, it's an extra 50% on your commission. First mapping a planet, I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. You might get another 50% commission, I'm not sure. Wow. Cool. All right. That was easy. <laughs> but yeah, um, so with trading, you can make money with very little. Trading, on the other hand, you need to have the capital to purchase goods in a quantity sufficient to make you a good profit on a run. So that's why that's second on my list. Take the money from exploration, use that to go into trading, and then once I have the money, once I have elite status in trading, which um, I'm not sure how much total money you need to make. It might be like 300 million or something. I don't know. You take all that money and then you pour it into buying a, a good combat capable ship. And because combat is, um, there's more risk involved, obviously you can lose your ship. Um, you have a nice pool of money that you can pull from. I see bodies, I see bodies, what's this? Asteroids. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Nothing good here. So that's how I'm going to be climbing the ladder. But you could start out with combat if you wanted to. Um, go out in like an eagle or an adder and just kind of work your way up the ranks that way. I mean, there's so many ways to approach this game. But that's my long-term goal for this game anyway. And you can see I've got the dealer rank in trading, so I've been doing stuff. Um, I think that's actually how I afforded... Um, yeah, yeah, I was cargo running in my Cobra Mark III. That's how I got the money for the, for the um, Kestrel, uh, the, the Diamondback Explorer that I used. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. Is there anything here? No. Okay, good. All right. Let's wait for the start of turn. Yellow. Jump out of here. How far away are we? Oh, cool. We're like four jumps away. Very nice. So... One thing, um, okay, so this is interesting. Apparently in the world of Elite Dangerous, we have the technology to fold space around an object, but we haven't figured out artificial gravity, or at least in the lore. So I'm wondering when we get um, this new, um, this new update. If you're in your ship, are they going to um, either like give us artificial gravity on our ships? Okay, so there's three op three um, possibilities, right? Yeah, those are icy bodies, gas giants, probably a class. Doesn't look like there's anything good here. Alright. Okay, so there's three possibilities. One is they don't let us walk around in our own ships. Which would be a shame. I'm really looking forward to that. Two. Um, they release like a Galnet, which is the, the game, the in-game news feed. That, oh, scientists have figured out 
artificial gravity, but we can only do it on a small scale, so, you know, only ships will have it. Wouldn't you be cool? I'm like, that would, that would work. Third option, which I doubt they do this, is, um, they have zero G on the ships, and you have to do, like, a push and pull mechanic to get your character to move around the ship. Uh, I doubt they're gonna do that, because they'd have to write um, you know, they'd have to code all that. But, I don't know, like, the ships already have Newtonian physics, so it would just be a matter of scaling that, um, into the first person section. So I don't know. Um, option two or three is fine with me. Um, option three would probably be my, my preferred, but I understand that they might not be able to do that. Um... Star Citizen just basically said, no, we got artificial gravity, and they just star, star, star trek it up. But it does have um, zero-G uh, mechanics, so you can actually, like, go out in a space suit and, like, float around. I don't know. Um, I'm, like I said, there, right now it's just speculation. Like, no one knows anything yet. So, but all we can do right now is just kind of wait see what happens. Hmm. Okay. Alright, let's see what's, uh, what's in here. High Metal Content World... Ice body. Okay, that's either a rocky ice world or an earth like. <laughs> I can't tell. Uh, you know what? I'll just scan this system. It's fine. I'll just see what's out here. I have a feeling it's probably going to be an icy rock body, but, eh, well, you know. Okay, that was not a Earth-like. Oh well. <laughs> I think once I get a little more experience with the uh, filtered spectral analysis... Oh, well, that's promising. High Metal Content Worlds, I think, can be terraformed. I'll have to look. Wow, three stars over there. Right, last one. Alright, let's see what's in this system that's worth looking at. Oh. Uh, looking promising. Okay, Rocky Ice World. Yeah, none of those are going to be terraformable, so we won't even bother. Actually, let's see what we got here. What's this? Nope. Ice Body. This red planet looks promising. Ah. Nope. Not terraformable. And then this one's probably an ice. Yeah. Oh well. Hmm. 
Alright, haven't checked the chat in a while. Let me go do that. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I plan to do the peaceful trading. <laughs> um, the, the one where you have to buy the cargo. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I, I kind of hate the Empire, the Imperial faction in this game. Because they have uh, legalized slavery. And um, as someone who played uh, Memmatar for so long in EVE Online, I uh, have an issue with that. Compromised navigation beacon. What? Mercenary, bounty hunting. Eh, human. Okay, yeah, no, we're not going over there. Um, Pirate activity detected. Oh, this looks like a fun system. Great. Hmm. There we go. Hillary Depot. That's where we need to be. Starbird. Oh, so I haven't talked about the um, fleet carrier update yet. Okay, so fleet carriers are this new thing in the game. Um, fleet carrier is essentially a capital ship that players can own. And you can provide services on this ship. So, for example, um, refueling, repairing, um, the ability to upload um, universal um, cartography data, all this kind of stuff. And what's really neat about these ships is you can jump from system to system with them. I think they have a range of like, oh, my gut says 5,000 light years, but I'm not sure. Um, but you have to buy, um, you have to have fuel for them. So, um, downside to them is they cost like 5 billion credits. Wait, does it? Yeah, 5 billion credits. And they have a weekly upkeep cost. And there's also wear and tear every time you jump. You have to, it's this whole thing. So, you basically run your own business, more or less. Um, oh, is this on a planet? Okay, I guess you are on a planet. Huh. Do I want to land? Yeah, I'll land on this planet. It's fine. Anaconda. Identified vessel. Imperial Eagle. Alright. So that went live earlier this week, I think. Or maybe last week. So, fleet carriers are pretty cool. I I honestly don't know if I'll... So, a bunch, several people have criticized, several players have criticized, you know, the whole purpose of fleet carriers. And in my mind, they're designed for guilds. Well, they're called squadrons in this game, I think. Yeah, squadrons. Um, so, you know... That's kind of how I see it. I'm actually not a member of any squadrons, to be honest. Um, just haven't gotten to that point yet, I guess. Um, but, um... So, yeah. So, that that's a thing that's in the game now. There were rumors that there would be a base, a base building element, but that, um that's not coming with this current expansion now it's possible that the um oh okay someone just flew by super cruise here we go see i don't think i've taken this thing down to a planet before this will be interesting yeah there's our planetary outpost I 
actually. Let's go a little bit higher. There we go. I don't want to jump out of glide just yet. We're just going to kind of ride this out. But if they do, um, if the devs do base building, I think they're using the planetary, uh, the uh, fleet carriers as kind of like a um, prototype for that. So kind of tweak the mechanics on that. Because I'm sure like base building, there's going to be like um, upkeep costs and all that kind of stuff. All right. Okay, I dropped out a little too short. I'm still getting the hang of the glide mechanic. Hmm. Such a shame that Fallout 76 ended up being complete and total garbage. They did a um, free play weekend few weeks ago and I gave it a shot and it's just ugh, just so bad so bad ugh. and I don't think anyone asked for a fallout MMO I don't know But yeah, I pretty much just played that game so I could see Pam's house. Which, those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, Monster Factory. Look up Monster Factory, final, the final Pam. You'll know what I'm talking about. Watch that one. Um, the, the devs were apparently a fan of the McElroy brothers, and they did a, a little homage to them. And so there's like a thing called like Pam's house, and it's got like, you know... Props and stuff from that whole bit. Well, I'm coming up to two hours now. Actually, hold on, let me check something. I was just checking my um, my spreadsheet. We are just over 2,200 light years away from the solar system. So we're not too far into our journey. Not bad, like a thousand light years an hour ish. All right, we get clearance to land. Pad six, all right. Which one's pad six? I hope that's pad six right there. That looks a little too small for my ship though. Oh, is that a six? That is a six. No, that's five? Damn it, I can't see. No, that's six. Okay, that's pad six. Okay, cool. Deploy, landing gear. I need my lights on. Ooh, there we go. I'm getting better with this thing. Contact. Maglock's engaged. All right, let's refuel. Visit the starport services, see how much money we made. And make some friends while we're at it. 
Oh, wow. 4.5. See, I need to stop underestimating myself. Like, how much money I'm going to make. I need to take whatever number I come up with and just multiply it by two. All right. 